Hello. In this episode, I will be discussing the solution to this engineering puzzle that involves a lever with an isosceles triangle shaped mass and a rectangular shaped mass on either side of the lever. The question to be answered is, which way will the lever tip? That is, assuming that the entire red part of the lever is perpendicular to the gravitational acceleration vector as an initial condition. And that's just a fancy way of saying that the lever is not tilted toward any one side. So I found this puzzle while scrolling through Instagram. It was something that stood out to me because it looked like uh, one of those mechanics problems from my undergraduate engineering days. Looking through the comments, I found that no one answer seemed to dominate the chat. And I was curious what the true answer was really. So I decided my, uh, to solve it myself. Intuitively, you may have already figured out the answer, you know, just by looking at it. But here I'm going to give a more precise answer using a little bit of math. Now I could solve the specific problem directly, but let's make a little let's make things a little more interesting and solve a more general version of the problem first. We'll see that we think of these shapes as being located on the xy plane, uh, where the x-axis runs along the surface of the lever, and the y-axis is perpendicular to the x-axis and intersects with the fulcrum of the lever over here. Uh, we also specify a few points in green. Note that uh, x tri b is actually halfway between x tri a and x tri c over here. Uh, this is actually supposed to be x tri c. There's supposed to be a c right over here. Uh, but, you know, I don't really need to fix that, I guess. <laughs> so there's also two other green points over here, uh, x rec a and x rec b. So we also... Um, the point, yeah, okay, so and directly below the peak of the isosceles triangle is x tri b, it's also halfway between uh, x tri a and x tri b, I'm uh, sorry, x tri c, and we specify mass is m, height is h, density is rho, and g as gravitational acceleration. So in order to determine which way the lever will tip, you know, we'll tip this way, or we'll tip this way. Uh, we need to know the sign of its angular acceleration, alpha. Alpha is over here in that equation. If we use the conventional sign convention, then a positive alpha will correspond to a counterclockwise rotation, which is this way, um, whereas a negative alpha will correspond to a clockwise rotation, which is this way. But how do we, how would we solve for alpha? Well, we know that the sum of all torques acting on a mass or a system is equal to the moment of inertia, I, multiplied by alpha, which is ex, uh, angular acceleration. Thus, angular acceleration is proportional to the sum of torques acting on the, on the system. Since mo moment of inertia is always positive or greater than or equal to zero, the sum of the torques acting on the system is the same as that of alpha. Sorry, the sign of, of the sum of torques acting on the system is the same as that of alpha. So the signs are going to be the same. Therefore, our plan will be to sum the torque contributed by the triangle, the triangular mass, and the rectangular mass, and determine whether that sum is positive or negative. If it's positive, then the lever will tip left and if it's or rotate counterclockwise and if it's negative then the lever will tip right or rotate clockwise all right so here are the equations uh, t tri is the torque contributed by the triangle um, and then we also have this equation down here which is equal to the mass of the triangle so remember, torque in this case is the vertical force multiplied by the horizontal displacement. In the equation for torque, we are summing infinitesimal torques over the area of the triangle, which is uh, in this double integral over here. Uh, that is, we are summing infinitesimal force per area, negative uh, g rho tri over here, multiplied by the displacements, which is x. We have a sum of double 
we have double integrals over here. So we're taking the sum over an infinitesimally, uh, over infinitely infinitesimal pieces. And we have, uh, because we're summing over the area of the triangle from x tri a to x tri b, and then from x tri, sorry, x tri a to x tri b, and then from x tri b to x tri c. Uh, the, red, the k written and the y boundary of both integrals represents the absolute value of the slope, the slope of the isosceles triangle. So one, one is going to be a positive slope, and the other is just going to be the negative version of that slope. OK, we got that. All right, so we're using the equation y is equal to plus or minus k times, times x minus b to model those edges. So here's one of them, and there's the other, positive and negative k. Uh, we're adding the offset x tri b because um, or x tri a, x tri a or x tri b, because we're going to shift either this much to the left or this much to the left from the center. Um, and the bottom integral, we integrate over the same boundaries, but this time the integrand is density. So when, when we sum everything, this is the bottom integral. So the integrand is density. We sum over the same area from x tri a to x tri b, and then from x tri b to x tri c. Uh, and also these slopes, we're summing over the area of the triangle. So then we're summing over density. So that means that we get the mass of the triangle. And if we solve these two equations, then we, we can condense them into a single equation for torque contributed by the triangle the triangular mass, t tri, as a function of the mass of the triangle, m tri, um, gravitational acceleration, g, and the three points on the triangle specified in the diagram, x tri a, x tri b, and x tri c. These three points. So we can do the same thing for the torque contributed by the rectangle over here except the only difference is that we integrate over this rectangular area. So then we have, you know, we have the torque T rec contributed by the rectangular mass. Then we also have the equation for its mass. And we get this condensed expression for torque contributed by the rectangle as a function of the mass of the rectangle, or rectangle, <laughs> rectangle, <laughs> Uh, gravitational acceleration, so mass of the rectangle, m rec, gravitational acceleration, g, and the two points on the rectangle specified in the diagram, x rec a and x rec b. This over here. So we have successfully obtained the torques contributed by both the triangular and the triangular and rectangular masses. The torque contributed by them. T, tri, and T rec. So now let's go back to our original equation uh, for angular acceleration that we talked about earlier. So the sum over the shapes of T shape, torque of the shape, is equal to I times alpha, which implies that T tri plus T rec is equal to I times alpha, which implies that T tri plus T rec over I is equal to alpha. Or in other words, alpha is proportional to t tri plus t rec. All right, so now let's go back to our original problem in which, in which we had the 10 kilogram masses, you know, both the triangular and the rectangular masses are both 10 kilograms. They're both two meters tall, but the height doesn't really matter in this case or in the general case either. Um, they're both six meters apart. Their centers are six meters from the fulcrum of the lever. 12 meters apart total. The width of the triangular mass is two meters. The, the width of the rectangle is one meter. And the fulcrum is right there in the middle, of course. So which way will it tip? Well, uh, if we substitute the numbers into our general equation and simplify, we get a solution of alpha is approximately this, which is equal to 
negative 48 g over i. So what does this mean? This means that the lever must rotate clockwise. Why? Because g and i, g and i must be positive or greater than or equal to zero. This is because you know we're not dealing with the rotating mercury anti-gravity engines as seen in the TR3B. <laughs> you know, that's just a little nod to the uh, the drones in the sky. I think it's probably TR3Bs, anti-gravity mercury engines. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the lever, the lever must rotate clockwise. Okay, that's it for today. If you want me to solve more puzzles like this one, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe, of course. Thank you for watching, and stay curious.